Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today I'm going to take you for a walk around a ITI 8.5 by 20 commercial landscape trailer. This particular unit has everything the standard car haulers have, but has a, quite a few, I'll say, add-ons that make this landscape friendly for your commercial landscaper. So a lot of landscapers end up basically buying a traditional car hauler straight out of the box that's geared for, I'll say, general cargo, anything from a car to general stuff. This trailer is geared specifically toward someone using it every day as a commercial landscaper or similar application. We've had folks use this for all kinds of different things. Uh, but again, uh, specific to a landscaper. So we'll show you some of the features on this. Everything pretty much you see here is standard. Start out up front. It's gonna have an adjustable coupler. Traditionally, a cargo trailer would have a fixed. This is a two and five sixteenth inch adjustable. So I left one of the safety chains up front. This is a, a lot, I'll say, meteor safety chain and what you're normally going to get on most cargo trailers. That's actually an equipment grade chain. Now I left the other one on the hook for you to show you. There are uh, hooks on either side to keep them up out of the weather uh, or uh, you put them where a lot of customers do and just hook them on the adjustable coupler for trailers that have that. This also has a nicer jack instead of your traditional A-frame jack. Uh, this one's going to be set back, so you don't have to worry about interfering with your truck tailgate. It's got grease dirt on it. Then one of the nice things about a drop leg jack, you can simply pull the pin at the bottom. You've got an inner foot that comes out. You don't got to worry about carrying around a block of wood or similar uh, to get it off the tow vehicle. Uh, this trailer also has dual prong plug. It's a fully sealed wire harness, which is nice. It's also got a clip that gives you a spot to put the plug facing down so you don't have to worry about elements getting in, worry about it dragging, etc. cetera. Uh, of course, standard equipment would be your breakaway with your breakaway battery. Now, this unit has a triple tube tongue. So instead of a traditional A-frame, you've got a triple bar running back. Now that bar runs to a header, which is nice. You'd be surprised, a lot of cargo trailers uh, don't have a header, or just have a formed header. Uh, this is actually a two by six tube structural header that it ties back into. Now, the tongue's not only a triple tube, but it's also extended. It's six inches longer than a traditional trailer, but then the adjustable coupler is also gonna net you roughly another four to five inches. So it's about an 11 inch longer tongue. Uh, this setup, pretty ideal for, I'll say, most pickups. About the only thing it might not work for would be is if you got a stake body with a dump bed or similar, uh, then it may not work. But other than that, there's not too much this wouldn't work with. Uh, again, having the radius front instead of the Venos gives you a little bit more maneuverability. Typically, a truck's going to be about six foot wide, so you need at least three foot of clear span. Uh, stake bodies and that, you might get uh, uh, eight foot wide, which should need four foot. Uh, on a, a radius front with the extended, with the adjustable, you get that necessary clearance needed. A lot of times on your traditional box trailer, you get a one-inch trim. This is gonna be a three inch. It's also got self-tapping uh, lags in it, not trim screws. A lot of times in trim, you just get a trim screw like that, a little bit heavier. Also notice it's mitered, gives it a nice clean look. Now on the tongue itself too, instead of being traditional frame paint, this has a truck bed liner. So like what's in your, your, uh, in your trucks nowadays, uh, I got the same on the tongue instead of just a frame paint. Stone guard on this is two foot. Sometimes you'll see them 12 or 14, or I'm sorry, 12 or 16. This comes up a two full, uh, full two foot, gives you a little more protection. Uh, so some trailers are gonna be fully screwed. Some are gonna be screwless. Uh, this is gonna be a semi screwless. One nice part about semi, it gives you some peace of mind in knowing that every seam on this trailer is screwed in place. So every once in a while on a screwless, you'll get a pop at your seam. Your seams on this are fully screwed, and then a semi-screwless is gonna have two studs in between on a 16 center wall. So you got a four foot panel every 16, you got wall studs. These two studs here are gonna be glued. Seams are gonna be screwed. So some guys will call this a glued and screwed, semi-screwless, et cetera. Um, nice setup. If you're gonna decal the side of this, Nice and clean, decal guy doesn't have a whole lot to worry about. Uh, gives it a nice clean area free of, I'll say the majority of your screws on it, but still has the peace of mind of knowing that it is glued, or I'm sorry, screwed at the seams. Uh, I got some extra marker lights, top 
uh, front center not required. Again, this is the uh, radius front round top. Got your bullet LED corners. Uh, one, I'll say upgrade that they do on this. This has an 080 Cove. Uh, some manufacturers on the round top roof will just use a exterior aluminum, which uh, this is an 030, by the way. Some are using a little bit thinner 024. Uh, but some manufacturers will use this 030 exterior up on the Cove, and then it'll have splices. This is a separate 080 Cove. It is fully extruded, one piece all the way front to back. So it's about two and a half, three times thicker, but it's also one continuous piece. Uh, gives it a nice clean look. I'll say a weatherproof uh, setup as well. Uh, fenderettes on your eight and a half wides. Now keep in mind, eight and a half wide trailers are never, I'll say truly eight and a half. Uh, DOT is gonna measure to the widest structural body point, which is gonna be your fender. Those are about an inch and change. So your body is going to be about eight foot four to the outside. Your overall about eight foot six to the outside of the body. Inside wall to wall, you're about eight foot. A lot of landscapers like these eight and a halves because uh, with eight foot roughly inside wall to wall, it gives you enough room to get mowers in, and then you can put your um, all your goodies. I'll say on the side wall and still have clearance to get through. Seven wides end up getting pretty tight. Uh, this is a six lug wheel. It's a 5,200 pound axle. Highly recommend anybody that's a commercial landscaper seriously consider getting something with a six lug 5,200 pound axle. Uh, a lot of guys say, but I don't need it because of what I'm hauling weight wise. Well, it's the duty cycle that gets you. So we recommend the, the 10K GVW 5,200 pound axles. Now this not only has the 52s, this also is going to be a torsion axle. So you don't see any equalizer or spring in between. That's because this is a torsion axle setup. Uh, this has the uh, six log wheel. It's going to be a 225-75 R15 load range D. It's an eight ply tire. Uh, they call for 65 pound air. Uh, one nice thing about the 5200 pound axle, you get uh, actually, the inner bearing on a 52 is the same as a 7,000 pound. Uh, the brakes are actually going to be the same size, uh, 12 and a quarter inch, as the 7,000 pound axle. So, a 5,200 pound axle, I'll say, is a fairly heavy duty setup. Uh, again, for, for this, makes a great landscape trailer. Uh, seems to hold up very well for that heavy duty user. Have a lot better luck with a 10K for a commercial guy than a seven, to the point where honestly, we don't even bring many car haulers in in a 7K. Uh, most everything we bring in is gonna be a 10, especially anything like this that's set up for a commercial user. Going back to the rear of the trailer, notice extra hinges. Traditionally, car haulers will get uh, two to four hinges. Sometimes they'll only be about four or five inches wide. Uh, these are your 10 inch hinges. Notice they've all got grease zerts. There's a total quantity of six of the hinges on the trailer. Uh, it's also got dual aluminum grab handles. A lot of times you'll see plastic. Uh, these are actually gonna be aluminum both sides. A uh, little pet peeve of mine, I guess, would be the hardware. We see a lot of Chinese hardware from some brands. Uh, this is actually Flexco made in Indiana. Just a smoother setup. Even as simple as this, if you look at some of the uh, off-brand or the import stuff, uh, it's just not as tall, it's not as strong. A lot of it squeaks whenever you move it uh actually too this is nice because it's got security built in a lot of times you'll see one uh bar coming through not the double which actually covers your bit somebody can't rip your stuff off as easily thin strip leds give it a nice clean look notice this has your three bumpers on the back of the door to protect it uh the truck bed liner that's actually on the front tongue same thing continues to the rear of the trailer and then, of course, your bullet LED lights. Rear door on this is going to be their Super Duty door. So we showed you the hinges, but now I'm going to show you the rest of the door. Uh, pressure treated. It's also got a, a diamond plate knife edge that's built in. So if you've ever been a landscaper and used a regular cargo trailer door, you'll know that ramp flap extension where your Z hinge or butterfly hinge is, it just wears out over time, needs re, uh, re-secured. Um, much better permanent setup on these. Uh, from the outside, looks the same. Inside, it's all built in, nice setup. 
So most landscapers do not want a beaver tail. Uh, these would be a straight floor. Uh, unlike a car, you don't need that uh, beaver tail for transition getting in. Now, one thing this does have is your D-rings. Now, depending on what you're putting inside here, you may need to add uh, D-rings, or retrack or whatnot inside. Uh, pressure treated plywood floor. So this isn't your engineered or your regular plywood. This is an exterior grade plywood. Uh, fender boxes as well also get the truck bed liner that you've seen now you also notice there's a perimeter kick plate on this so if someone were to say run into the walls uh, you've got your kick plate your wall sheeting and then your wall stud now one thing to point out one of the many upgrades to the landscape HD model uh, there's gussets at the bottom of each wall post so if a landscaper were to hit this, you've got a three quarter, a three eighth, then you've got a wall stud, then you've got a gusset on each wall stud, and then each of the main corners gets a nine by 16 wall stud as well. Uh, another detail on these, it's nice. Of course, you've got a 16 on center wall, but where your seams and that come together, this has an aluminum H mold. This gives it a nice clean look, a lot cleaner than your Lawan type strips. Uh, the only thing that I'll say brands this landscape specific would be uh, your line trimmer racks on these. They can obviously easily be removed. So if you are planning on using this, something other than landscaping, those can come out. Roof studs are traditionally going to be 24 center. Uh, on the landscape units, these are actually going to be a 16 center. And then there's two roof vents. Uh, on this model standard equipment in addition to the side flow through vents that are designed for your cross ventilation. Uh, another detail on the roof, you've got a full sheet of Luan. Sometimes you'll just see about a 16 inch wide strip and where your seams are, it's nice. They put a piece of flat on those. Two dome lights, standard equipment with a residential wall switch instead of your, I'll say traditional switching or dome light switched. Makes it nice as soon as you get in the side door, you can flip those on. Uh, if you look at the top also, it makes it nice. Uh, just finished out with your three inch trim. Your wiring's somewhat easily accessible there. Uh, up front, you got a workbench. Put your gas cans, your, um, your um, line trimmer spools, any hardware you need, etc. cetera. Uh, you can get an overhead cabinet if you want additional uh, storage or you can get a uh, second shelf if you want. Shelf makes it nice if you got any mowers or whatnot, you can fit a push mower or similar underneath. Side door is an RV style door. Uh, not only does it have the traditional RV latch, you've also got a bar lock outside as well for extra security. Side door step well for ease of getting in the unit. So again, four D rings on these standard. I'll show you underneath. Uh, these are actually plated in a little bit different and heavier than some. Uh, most just run a piece of flat from cross member to cross member. These are uh, a three-sided built a little bit uh, heavier. Units are flying out of here, folks. Better get them while they last. All right, so going to the passenger side, again, you see the back side of the uh, cross ventilation. See another bullet marker. And then, uh, as mentioned, the uh, bar lock on the side door, in addition to the, uh, the standard RV style latch. Now, you notice, too, this is metal instead of plastic. It's got an aluminum door hold back instead of your plastic door hold back as well. So, underneath the trailer, a couple things I'll show you. You've got uh, junction box wiring there. And here's the header I was referring to earlier. You notice it's gusseted out. Uh, where it ties in, it's going to be gusseted as well. And you can see your tongue. Again, torsion suspension. Another thing I'll point out, these outriggers. So your trailer's built in a 7-wide frame, but it's an 8.5-wide. Those outriggers are made out of uh, box tube. Instead of traditionally, they're made out of form channel like your cross members. So the outriggers on this are going to be built um, heavier than, I'll say, most of what I see in the industry. 
So this is the eight and a half by 20 landscape HD. It's shown here in white. It is available in other colors. Again, shown in the 20 foot length, but we also do these in 18, 20, 24. You can get it in a 16 if you need a shorty. Uh, generally speaking, we don't order many 16s just because that short of a length, uh, a lot of times this doesn't need quite as heavy of a platform as, as the 20s. Uh, we kind of find to be the ideal size. Uh, didn't mention the roof earlier, I don't believe, but that's a one-piece aluminum roof as well. Stays a little bit cooler inside. Trail like this is going to weigh about 3,800 pounds empty. It's going to give a net legal payload of about 62. You're also going to pick up roughly 15% tongue weight to the truck side via the ball. 15% uh, of 10,000 pounds, about 1,500. So again, if you really need that extra capacity, and most guys on this don't because their equipment doesn't weigh that much, uh, you're going to be good for about 62 plus your tongue weight on this. Uh, if you do have heavy equipment, if you want a even heavier duty cycle type trailer, uh, you can get this with uh, heavier running gear, 7,000 pound axles as well. If you have any questions on this or any of your other trailers, feel free to give us a ring, 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.